Once the killing of an enemy was a great thing. We were men and we were honored. The taking of his horse was a great thing. We would ride into the villages and we were praised. The enemy destroyed and his horses following us. The tribes chanted our manhood. We were heroes of our children. We were a nation and we had pride in our way. But now, now you twist the words. The killing of enemy is called murder. The taking of his horse, stealing. And we, Kiowa, Comanche, Cheyenne, Arapaho, we are free people no more. We are nothing. There are no separate nations in this land. There is only the United States. And you, Okahatan, you are a ward of that government. Ward? What is wards? You mean we are like they were one time. Now we are the slaves. Now we are black. Did you or did you not murder a party of buffalo hunters six months ago? They were sent to kill the buffalo so there would be no food for us. So we would have to creep back to reservation to beg for meat. We fight to stay free. Guilty is charged. Lean Bear, Cheyenne. Lean Bear, Cheyenne. Dumas, trial. What? Dumas, trial. 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 trials for wards of the government. There is merely punishment for crimes committed. Now, did you or did you not lead a band of 15 warriors into northwest Texas, raiding and burning and murdering? That'll be enough of that. Running dog. Kiowa. With a band of other Kiowas, you attacked the settlement of Adobe Walls. Four settlers were killed. That is our land. Guilty as charged. Your general, General Miles in Leavenworth. Your big chief. He gives me this blue coat for bravery in battle. When he hears what you do to me, he punish you. He give you the anger, you give me the anger, you give me! Guilty as charged! Get out! You've all committed the crimes of arson, pillage, and murder. You are no longer independent nations. You are subject to our laws, the laws of the United States, for said crimes. You are all banished to Fort Marion in St. Augustine, Florida. You will be transported out of this Indian territory. You will be removed from this land for the rest of your life. Sergeant, take the prisoners out. All right. For four years, the Indians of the Plains have been forced to live under a poorly administered, often corrupt reservation system. Against privation and hunger, some of the chiefs have rebelled. Now the army has been ordered to stop the new violence and arbitrarily to punish the leaders.
Great Adventure, brought to you by Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by you Lucky Whip Topping Mix. This is not whipped cream. This is Lucky Whip. New Lucky Whip Topping Mix. Lucky Whip whips just like whipped cream, looks just like whipped cream, even tastes as luscious as real whipped cream with only half the calories. Yes, Lucky Whip tastes as luscious as real whipped cream with only half the calories. Try Lucky Whip tonight. Wherever Dick Matthew goes, he packs a 38. The 38 is Life Boy. 38-hour deodorant soap. Dick Matthew meets a lot of people. He needs a lot of protection. Using Life Boy regularly gives him 38 hours worth. Life Boy now contains 50% more deodorant than ever. It gives you protection you can bank on. And you don't have to go 38 hours to appreciate that. Hey, should you be packing a 38? Indian Territory, a dusty, primitive world made up of mountains, dry riverbeds, blazing sun, hostile Indians. This is headquarters for the officers and men of the 4th and 10th Cavalry, Major General Davidson commanding. His visitor, on special mission from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, Captain Richard H. Pratt. You fought the Indian in many a campaign, Captain. What are your feelings about them? Be firm, keep your powder dry. Mm. That's as good as no feeling. You're uh, very happy to be stationed at Fort Leavenworth, aren't you, Captain? Yes, sir. Have you a wife? And two children, sir. Mm. Have a cigar. No, thank you, sir. Yes, for a young, ambitious Army officer, Fort Leavenworth is certainly the place to be. But I'm afraid you'd better say goodbye to all that. What do you mean, sir? Your orders are changed. You are to escort the Indians all the way to Fort Marion in St. Augustine, Florida. And you are to remain there with them until they have become resigned to their punishment. I'm sorry, Pratt. You mean, sir, I'm, I'm to go on from Fort Leavenworth to Florida? I'll assign a detail of troops to accompany you. They'll remain in St. Augustine with you. A hey, Sergeant Willis will be the NCO in charge. I'm going to take my family to those swamps, sir? To that hell hole in St. Augustine? Someone has to go. Well, it won't be me. I, I won't bury myself like that. What about my career, my wife? She's a woman of sensitivity. I can't expect her to live among savages. You refuse, Captain? I'll be buried in any event, won't I? St. Augustine or... A court martial. But why me, sir? Why me? Accident. Fate. When the orders were changed, it just happened that you were the officer en route here. Now, you will proceed in two days to Fort Leavenworth. While you're there, you can make arrangements for your family. Are there any questions? Dismissed. Captain Pratt? Yes. Sergeant Willis, 10th Cavalry, reporting for duty, sir. Reporting. I'm in charge of the prisoner detail under your command, sir. Your General Miles in Leavenworth. He give me this blue coat for bravery. He punish you for chaining Red Dog. You he make you eat sorrow. Oh, so. Captain, you do not put me in prison. You will not shut me from living. If I had gone, I'd kill you. Sergeant, lock this one up. Corporal, 
Lock this man up. Move out of Walkerson. I Greybeard. Cheyenne. Whiskey peddler come to my people. Cut heart out. Get back in line. Afraid of man who only speak? You have something you want to say? I have much honor. Many praise my courage, it like wind, they say. I, Greybeard, afraid of nothing, tell you this. Wind that is locked up becomes storm. What I do to whiskey peddler, I do to you. Feed heart to dogs. Get back in line. Move them out. Animals. Violent animals. They don't look at it that way, sir. What do you mean? Well, they figure they're like, uh, like patriots. They figure we're invading their land. And now we're taking their leaders off to prison. Carry on, Sergeant. Captain. I know you're disappointed by what has happened, and I sympathize, but well, it's the fortunes of war, isn't it? I trust your disappointment will not affect your treatment of the prisoners. They are Indians, but I'm told they're also human beings. You'll remember that, won't you? Yes, sir. Good luck, Captain. Good. Who are they? The wives and family, sir. Spring morning in 1875, three separate worlds begin a journey together. The world of Indians, of the Negroes, and of the white man, across the empty and silent plains. Hello, I'm Ed Reimers for Allstate. And with me are good drivers, Mr. and Mrs. Edward Dowden. Uh, Mr. Dowden's a medical student his wife, a teacher. They recently switched to Allstate. While I was in college, my father had been paying for my insurance. But when we were married and started out on our own, and the bills came to me, I was shocked. All the rates for folks under 25, like the Dowdens, are high. I spoke to my brother about it. He said he got low rates at Allstate, and they gave him good service on a claim. Both the Dowdens have good driving records, so they qualified for Allstate's special good driver rates for young marrieds. Uh, were the savings worthwhile, Mr. Dowden? 
We are now paying Allstate $48 less than we would have had to pay the other company for the same coverage on our car. Thank you, folks. Why don't you check with Allstate to find out what savings you may be able to make? You're in good hands with Allstate. The prison train journeyed from sunup to sundown. All through that first day, Captain Pratt could not forget the sound of the Indian women. Right here, Trooper. That wagon right here. What's your orders, Captain? What? Your orders? Feeding, exercising? Oh, yes, of course. Feed them a uh, half dozen at a time. In chains? Unchain them. And afterwards, let them sit in the shade. But make sure you put the chains back on. Yes, sir. Sergeant Willis. Yes, sir. You obviously approve the order, don't you? Yes, sir. Leg. Give it no chance to rest. Walk. Good. Take it. Good. Limp near table. Fall against me like beginning child. Limp to table. over a table, sir. That's what chains do. Make us walk like we drink whiskey. Pick up those things, Corporal. Yes. Cook! What all was on that table? Some dishes, two spoons, a couple of forks, and two knives, sir. Corporal? Yes, sir? Everything accounted for? One knife is missing, sir. Search him, Sergeant. To leave knives on table is stupid cook. Why do you think he can count two? Maybe only one knife, huh? Shut up, Harton. You talk too much. If I hide knife, it'd not be upon me. You find it in the heart of my enemy. That's enough. Nothing, Captain. Cook, are you absolutely certain there were two knives? Yes, sir. Dismissed. And I was beginning to feel sorry for them. I listened to their squaws wailing. I looked at them in the wagons. And I said to myself, they're suffering. Maybe I should treat them with more respect. Let them walk like men. But well, they're not men. There's nothing in their hearts but lies and thievery and murder. Well, from now on, things are going to be different. I'm going to keep them tied up like wild dogs. Sergeant, I want them kept in chains. Captain. And there'll be no relaxing, no softening of treatment. But, Captain, you. Sergeant, can... whose side are you on? Your orders will be carried out, sir. You stand at attention until you're dismissed. 
I want to tell you something, Sergeant. They're inferior. There's not one decent, honest feeling in them. They were born savages, and they'll remain savages. Now chain them up! Yes, sir. Shoot me. What? Me, wild dog. Shoot me. Do not let them suffer. What's he talking about? They have enough pain. Suffer much. I, Greybeard, I stole knife. Shoot me. Give them kindness. Here. Now shoot me. Tell me where to stand. If you cannot, Captain, tell Black Sergeant. He knows why. He doesn't stop being a man. Take him away, Sergeant. Feed them. But move, do you hear? Captain. Yes? You're about keeping the prisoners chained at all times. Cancel it. Yes, sir. Sergeant. Sit down. This afternoon, Sergeant, I was frightened. Yes, sir. I don't want you to think, Sergeant, that I was... Oh, I know what you mean, Captain. You were just surprised by that engine, that's all. As you were, Sergeant. Can I speak my mind, Captain? You know, what really scared you was how big and noble an engine soul can be. You see, oft times a man gets a set idea about somebody, and when they act different, well, it kind of scares a man to suddenly see how much he don't know about people. Within two weeks, the prison train reached General Miles' command at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. A rich country. Anything, anything could grow in this land. Get back there! Move back! Get him out of here! Take him back! Don't bring him here! Get him out of here! Take him back! Get back! children. Fine, they miss you. Dick, I heard about the assignment and it's unfair, terribly unfair, but I think it's going to be all right. While you were away, I pleaded, I pulled strings, 
I spoke to everyone. I spoke to General Miles' wife, and she's going to speak to the General. To the General? About what? Well, there's a good chance that you won't have to take this assignment, that you don't have to go on to Florida with these Indians. And I've been sitting here waiting for you to get back so that I could tell you it was really a good chance. You mean you spoke to people? To everyone of importance in Fort Leavenworth. Anna, I wish you hadn't. You shouldn't have. I shouldn't have? I mean, there's something shameful about it. An officer's wife going around begging, pleading for him. What did you expect me to do? You were away and time was important? You don't want to go on to Florida, do you? No, of course not. You've told me many times, right here in Fort Leavenworth, here is where you want to be, in the center of things, where there are chances for promotion. And if you go to Florida, that's all over. You and I and the children might be there for months or even years. Of course, I can't bury you and the kids in Florida. Then you'll speak to the general? Yes. Perhaps you'll have somebody else. Some unmarried officer that he can send. Somebody else to take those people to Florida. The Great Adventure will return after station identification. I, uh, I'm sorry about that little demonstration at the gate today. It certainly surprised me, sir. I've never seen so much violence. Perhaps it was a mistake. Letting the people know about that trip. But that's the way General Sherman wanted it done. Do you mean, sir, the, the army encouraged that demonstration? They wanted that sort of thing? You know what Sherman says about the only good Indian? This trip is to be an object lesson for all hostiles and subversives. But, sir, something could happen. I, I mean, real violence. General, do you mean that the army wants to exterminate those Indians? They, they don't want them to reach Florida, is that it? They don't care? Captain, neither one of us are in a position to question Sherman's policies, now are we? General! General Miles! He's a Kiowa, sir. His name is Running Dog. He claims you once gave him that coat. Coat? Yes, sir. For bravery in battle. Running dog, of course. The Battle of the Stake Plains three years ago. Good soldier. Running dog, good to see you again, my friend. It is a joy to running dog, too. It saddens me to see you here in my prison. Friend comes to friend. You must help me. Free me. Free me. I have done no wrong. I fought. Only as I have always fought. This coat has never seen shame. You see? My friend will free me. We will fight together again. No running dog. We'll not fight together again. I cannot free you. Cannot. You broke the law. But I did not break my people's law. I did not. I can do nothing. I must take orders from those that are higher than I am. You must be patient. And in time, after they've punished you enough, they'll set you free. I'm sorry, friend. Do not call me. Friends, do not speak my name. You dirty it. You shame it. You will let me die. You will let me die. Oh, I.
Prisoners will move out at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning in closed vans. The railhead, they'll be transferred to special cars where they'll... Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. You, uh, want to be relieved of this duty. At least that's what your wife told my wife. You never answered me, General. It's true, isn't it? They don't want these Indians to reach Florida alive. At least they don't care. You've made your choice, Captain. As I understand it, you uh, no longer want the responsibility. Very well, I can have another officer assigned. Of course, he may not particularly like Indians, but uh, we can't help that, can we? Make up your mind, Captain, make up your mind. Or is it your conscience? Come in. What is it? It's running dog, sir. What about it? He ripped up his blue coat and made a rope. Tried to hang himself. They cut him down in time. You're going on to Florida? Listen to me, Anna. Those Indians are going to die unless somebody helps them. And do you understand? They're going to die. I told General Miles I've changed my mind. I'm sorry, Anna. You're going to have to meet me in St. Augustine. In the darkness of the early morning, the prisoners were loaded onto a battered old prison car. Iron on their legs, and now iron around them. Across the prairies toward Florida. They had been accustomed to the high, dry plains, and now their bodies rebelled against the damp heat of the southeastern states. <laughs> The fever's still pretty high. Better get some more water on this compress, keep it cool. Iron makes us sick, Captain. Iron! First, feet die. Then hands. Then the heart. why you help, huh? You understand chains. Indian and black, they both slaves. They both suffer from white men. I ain't no slave no more. You have freedom, but Indian is your shadow. Indian is your memory. Look, will you let folks sleep?
flying. Girls. I've been trying to keep you alive. I'll hold out the hand of kindness to you. And you bite it like wild beasts. You understand nothing. It is you who understand nothing. Running dog, lean bear. The Akaya was Cheyenne. But if battle make them brothers, they were like one. It is you who understand nothing. It is you. First he look, then he turn away. That is moment it must be done. No sign of them, Captain. What about the weapons? We can keep looking. Where? In the dock? Well, they can't get far with chains on. No, but they're armed. They're armed. The train. The train, Sergeant. What's that, sir? Let's go back on the train, quick! Come on, move! Let's go. You men get off on the other side and wait. Go ahead, go. Sergeant, they may show themselves if they think we're gone. So go up and tell the engineer to start pulling off slow and then to wait for us up the track. And you right. come back and join us. Right. Stay down, get out of sight. I think we're gone. Maybe they'll show themselves. I didn't want him to die. Go get the train. Send it back for this man. Get a tourniquet around his leg. We'll bury them here in the field. You wouldn't stop fighting. 
It's as if you wanted to die. But I have to change. It's no good this way, no good at all. They haven't got a chance. It's the last thing I do, I'll make them change. Boy, at bedtime, we scrambled to brush our teeth. See, back at school, we were in a toothpaste test. For two years, everyone brushed three times a day. But my side had 46% fewer cavities. We used Crest. The other side used the same toothpaste, but without Floristan. Now, it's half checkups, watch treats, and brush often with Crest. The Therapeutics Council of the American Dental Association says Crest has been shown to be an effective decay preventive dentifrice that can be of significant value when used in a conscientiously applied program of oral hygiene and regular professional care. My side had 46% fewer cavities with Crest. Gotta wear my tuxedo? You look handsome. Stop using all my shampoo. Only use this much of this. Oh, well, concentrate. Mm. This much for all that lather? Concentrate it. You're right about the tuxedo. You're right, too. Huh? About the prel. Summer, 1875. Fort Marion, St. Augustine, Florida. Once the old Spanish fortress of San Marco. Here, Captain Pratt brought his prisoners behind stone walls 12 feet thick, where the temperature was 90 degrees. In a short time, three had died. A. B. C. The first three letters. A. B. C. All right. Now, who will say them after me? A. B. C. <laughs> <laughs> you will learn, do you hear? You will learn. You will make us like the white man, eh? Yes, Okahatan. You will read and write and learn new ways to use your hands, to earn your living. I will teach you so that you can live. And you will beat us into it, eh? If I have to, yes. Why, uh, why does not the white man change? But he does. Am I not different than I was at Fort Sill? <laughs> One man. But others will change. You are sure of that? I can be sure of nothing. I can't see into the future. Okahatan, I am sure of nothing but one thing. What is here in this dungeon now? All of you and me, this piece of chalk and that blackboard. Weapon. W-E-A-P-O-N. Weapon. That is the word. But the weapons of the past are no longer any good. The spear, the arrow, the rifle, they can no longer bring you freedom. Knowledge, Okahatan. Knowledge is the only weapon that can give you freedom and power. Beginning tomorrow, you will no longer live in these stone cells. I will give you lumber and tools, and you will build a bunkhouse, and you will live there in the sun. I will teach you, Okahatan, just as you have taught me. I can give you this new weapon knowledge. Now let's see what the red man will choose. I'm so glad you're here. 
been such a nightmare, hasn't it? I keep dreaming about them. I hear them moaning. I just get lost in their misery. I keep dreaming about wild animals in cages, walking back and forth, back and forth, moaning and just not being able to understand stop, why they're here. Stop. I want you to put him for transfer. Leave here? And return to Fort Leavenworth? To take up our life again? I can't. You can't? Anna, I've just begun teaching them. Reading and writing and how to use tools. What are you talking about? About helping them. By teaching them. But they're savages. They're not savages. They're human beings. They have souls and spirit and pride. No, Anna, we're staying here. We'll send for the children. Send for the children? Yes, I want to teach these men how to build, how to, how to make shoes, how to blacksmith. You mean you want to devote your career, your future, our future to them? I have to. I don't know. I just, I just have to. At least until my conscience is satisfied. To think you can teach Indians. Who do you think will thank you for it? Nobody cares about them. Nobody's even interested yes, in them. Yes, that's exactly the point. Nobody's interested in them. Oh, listen to me, Dick. How can it work? They can't learn. They won't change. They can't be trusted. How can you trust savages? They're not savages. Oh, how can you expect anything from them? I beg you, Dick, think of me, of the children. It's foolish and useless. It's not oh, useless. It's practical. It's a dream. A it's not a dream. dream. It's not a dream. Captain, Oka Hartman's escaped. He cut up his blanket and went over the wall. Let the guard. A couple of you men go down the street in that direction. Barber, right? You ran away, Okahatan. And I trusted you. You talk. You say, change. Live your way. Take up new weapon. But can Indian do it? So I try to find out. I come here to, to town. To see, to feel. I walk. I look in the window. Some people nod at me. Nobody throw rock. Maybe some people make beginning. I think I make one too. <laughs> and so you decided to get a haircut. Well, it's a good haircut, Okahatan. It's a fine one, my friend. began. Within four years, the captain would bring his prisoners to an abandoned military barracks in Pennsylvania and found the Carlisle Indian School. Twenty-five years later, as General Richard H. Pratt, 
He saw an entire reservation school system built on his model. Here in Fort Marion, it began. He gave the Indians a way to survive. Here, he gave them life. This is a plant, a fungus plant that grows, multiplies, and spreads in your skin. It causes athlete's foot and itching, burning misery. That's why Menon developed Quinsana Penetrating Foam, the new medication tested in a clinic that instantly starts to disappear to kill this growing fungus plant on contact. And as the foam starts to disappear, so does the misery of athlete's foot. Quinsana Penetrating Foam contains a widely used and recommended fungus killer. Its exclusive spreading action penetrates even the tiniest crevices of athlete's foot infection. And Quinsana Foam dries quickly, leaving no stain or ointment mess. Get new clinic-tested Quinsana Penetrating Foam. As the foam starts to disappear, so does the misery of athlete's foot start to disappear. And now, famous Quinsana athlete's foot powder comes in a new squeeze plastic container with a new puff top. Menon Quinsana for complete foot care. Before previewing next week's great adventure, here is Gerald Goff, a teacher and member of the National Education Association, with a postscript on tonight's story. During his 25 years at the Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania, Richard Pratt taught 5,000 students, representing more than 70 Indian tribes. From Carlisle came famous people such as Jim Thorpe. Thorpe is regarded by many as the greatest athlete of all time. Hundreds of less famous but equally important young men and women returned to their tribes from Carlisle to help their people. Although its football team played and beat the greatest colleges in America, Carlisle was really not a college. It was a training school. It granted no degrees. When it closed its doors in 1918, it left a job only partly done. A job that still remains to be completed. But the work of Richard Pratt was the start of a great adventure. Here are a few scenes from our next episode of The Great Adventure. My name is John Brown. I intend to seize this arsenal and all its armaments. Hey, John, where you are? You intend to let them hang you? I am fully persuaded that I am worth inconceivably more to hang than for any other purpose. If young man, you and your friends could make sure that they don't put any oil on the hinges of that trap. And that when I drop, and that rope goes around my neck, and the air is choked out of me, the screech of those hinges, and the snap of that rope, and the gasp of that air is heard. The Great Adventure has been brought to you by Menon, Quinsana Penetrating Foam, and by Crest, the toothpaste for families who want fewer cavities. <laughs>